The following is a presentation of TFNN. It is now time for Trade What You See with your host, Larry Pesavento. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, folks, uh, I'm going to start the show today by posting into uh, Tiger TV uh, the chart on gold going back to uh, April uh, the 19th and uh, to show the uh, bottom that we had, uh, excuse me, that's May 19th, and uh, show the bottom that occurred there where we, we had the double bottom down at the 1344 uh, level. Now, since that's happened, we've had one, two, three, four uh, major bottoms occur. Uh, each one of those is either an exact 618 or 786 retracement of the previous high. In other words, going from a low to a high to a low has come down exactly at the 786. The second one stopped exactly at the 618 from low to high to low. The third one stopped exactly at the 786, low to high to low. And then yesterday we had the fourth one that went from low to high to low, stopping again at the exact 786. But if you'll take a quick look, uh, or even take a slow look if you like, uh, this is a very, very long-term pennant formation. Now, pennants are one of the most classic of all technical patterns. Uh, it was featured in Gartley's book, Profits in the Stock Market, in 1937. Uh, but also it was featured by Dr. Andrew Lowe in his book, The Non-Random Walk Down Wall Street, in 2001. The difference between the two approaches is Dr. Lowe, being a mathematician and a scientist, uh, used very, very, uh, I, would, I would have to say, incredibly esoteric uh, mathematical formulas to prove that these pennants, flags, and triangles and stuff actually work. And he looked at over 800,000 patterns in the stock market over a 36-year period and found out that these patterns, not only do they work, but they repeat over and over again and give you some uh, a percentage of predictability over a random event. So he said that the market was basically chaotic in nature, but within the chaos are these non-random patterns that repeat over and over again. So today's focus is going to be on the gold pennant that is forming now that has been going on for several months. What we have happening here with these lower lows, excuse me, higher lows, is we have a, a minor uptrend. Uh, in the last uh, uh, seven days, we've had some lower tops. That forms the pennant. And so now we're at the point where we must get above the 1413 per ounce in August gold for the uh, pennant to break to the upside. If we break below 1392, the pennant would break to the downside. Now, the main, well, the, the difference between the pennant and the flag is very simple. A flag is either a square or a rectangle, and a pennant is exactly that. It's a triangle that comes out to form a tip, and that's what you're doing, you know, with the uh, gold contract right now. It's a very distinct pennant, and that's why I think it's relatively uh, important at this point. Uh, following Basil is always very tough, but today... Um, you know, is even more so because he's been so spot on. And then today he talked about the gold market, and he said that, you know, the, the, the amount of resistance that we have here uh, in gold was around that 14, 12, 14, 13 level, and he's absolutely correct because we need to get above that in order for it to, you know, move to the upside. Whether it's going to do it or not remains to be seen. My guess is it's not going to do it today because it had its chance and it's backed off more than $9 an ounce, which is quite a bit in gold, you know, on a short-term basis. So my assumption is we'll probably go down and retest the bottom side of the, uh, the triangle, which would take us down to that, uh, you know, 1396. But anything below 1392 would take us all the way down to the 1372 level. That's what I would be looking at. If, uh, if, it would hap if it happened that way. I'm going to put that pattern in because I think it's uh, important, you know, to really look at it because if it does work that way, it would really be a beautiful long-term Gartley, you know, on the um, uh, gold, and it would give a really good chance uh, to uh, see it. So if, if we break out on the upside above 1413 in the gold, that gives us a chance uh, to go much higher. So when you take a look at Tiger TV, you'll see two gold charts. One is the one that shows where we are in the pennant now. And then I also did one 
that shows what happens if the pennant breaks to the downside because my assumption is that's what's going to happen now because we had the chance. We took out yesterday's high. It didn't go anywhere, and that was right up against the line. So that tells us that we're most probably getting ready to go. Now, later in the show, I'm going to um, talk about the stock market here a little bit uh, because uh, we've had some big things happening. We finally you know, started a down move, if anybody can believe that. I think the, 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 the financial people don't even know how to report that things are going down, but uh, so far they are. But we're going to come into some very strong support in the S&P, about five points from where we are now, which would be equivalent to uh, another oh, 50 points or so in the uh, Dow Jones uh, Industrial Average. So we'll look at that just a little bit later. But before we do that, I think if we take a look at silver, because silver has been the, you know, the wicked stepsister, stepsister of this whole thing, and uh, I will put the, the chart up for uh, silver and, and gold together so you can see the fact that silver has been lagging you know, so very badly uh, in, the, uh, in the market. And you'll notice here that we've had you know, lower tops all along in silver, and we've had the higher bottoms. We have the same type of pennant formation occurring uh, in the silver that we do in the gold, which it should be because, you know, silver is just the poor man's gold. And, uh, but it, silver needs to get above the 2280 level for it to really get moving. All we've done is take out the previous high, previous day's high by a 1.27 expansion. And, uh, you know, that's really all that, is, that has occurred uh, at that point. So um, we're, we're watching the gold very, very closely. Uh, longer term, I'm still quite bullish on gold. Um, you know, when it didn't break out above the 1409 level today, uh, I said, well, you know, you're going to have to stand aside a little bit because it had it had its chance. It really did. Maybe I'm wrong, and, and I'm wrong a lot, you know. But uh, if it does break out above it, then, you know, it's certainly going to go a lot higher. But it had a chance to get above it, and it really didn't, uh, you know, didn't do it very well. And so I have to assume that it's not going to uh, – you know, not going to do that. Now, the next chart that I wanted to bring up, I've had a request to uh, revisit, you know, what's happened with Apple. And, uh, you know, Apple has been uh, an incredible uh, stock uh, for, you know, looking at Fibonacci things. And I'll post that into Tiger TV. And you can see the 60-minute chart on Apple going back uh, actually a full month because we made the last tie back on uh, May the 6th. Uh, then we made the you know the secondary low, which was a Fibonacci retracement at the uh, 1418 per share. Score <laughs> got gold on my mind at 418 per share. Then we rallied up to a, um, a perfect 786 retracement of that move at uh, 456 per share. Uh, we came down. Yesterday's low was a 786 retracement of the previous low. Yesterday's high was a 786 retracement of the previous high. It just keeps making these triangles, low, high, low, high, low, high. That's all the market's ever doing. That's the ABCD or Thunderbolt pattern that Gartley describes in his book on page you know, 249. That's really what it's looking at. So that means uh, by looking at Apple, it appears that we're getting ready for a move in Apple to come down somewhere in the area, forming another bullish Gartley pattern on this hourly chart that would come in uh, around the uh, 14 uh, 33 level, about $12 from where it is at this point. Now, if it does that, and uh, then we would be looking at a very low-risk buying opportunity in Apple at that point because you would have some very strong symmetry that's occurring, and that's another thing that would make it uh, look very, very feasible you know, from the long side. Now, remember, these are hourly charts, so you have to realize that these are uh, short-term things that must be uh, viewed, you know, on an hourly basis. You don't do an hourly uh, trade and then go to a weekly chart and see what the next support or resistance is. You, you can't trade that way because the risk per parameters on both of these things, uh, you know, are, are totally different. So keep in mind that if we do get to that point, then we'll certainly be watching uh, Apple at the uh, 1633 level to see if it gets to that point. Now, I wanted to uh, bring in, uh, we have right before we get to the break, I want to cover this because when we get back, we need to talk about the bond market and we need to talk about the Bradley stock market model. But uh, I really wanted to show the, uh, just put a 15-minute chart in on the, uh, uh, the E-mini S&P to show you what we're looking at here as far as major support uh, coming in around the 1608 uh, to 1606 level 
and we're very, very close. We'll probably happen while it's on the show now, but if you get a chance, you'll be able to see that it uh, has made these uh, lower tops, which is a downtrend, and then we also have high, lower bottoms, which is a downtrend. And if someone were to, you know, draw the channel line, and I'm going to do that for our folks in Tiger TV, and I'll show you how a natural, you know, channel line is being formed here, and then we will take a look at it. If I can do it correctly, we should be fine here in just a moment. Uh, yeah, not too bad. It's not as good as I like to see it, but it's still very, very close. And you could uh, see that we have a uh, very nice parallel channel coming down that should stop somewhere between 1608 uh, and, uh, you know, 1606. And then we would have a, uh, you know, pretty good rally, I think, uh, you know, to the upside. That's, that's what it looks like. And each of the rallies that we've had have been, you know, well over 20 S&P points, which is equivalent to, you know, about 100 and some, uh, actually about 150 Dow points. So we're going to have some great volatility in here. Uh, we've said all along for the past several months that this VIX index has been telling us that something is not right in Camelot. I mean, we've had higher bottoms in the VIX for uh, weeks and weeks now. I mean, even when the market was going dog out to the upside and, you know, they're talking about 17,000 and 20,000 Dow. The VIX was saying, no, 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 not on this run. This should not happen. And so this is what we're looking at when we're watching these things, that the markets are telling us something different than what, uh, you know, what the news is, uh, is trying to tell us. So I think that's an important concept uh, to remember. Um, when we, we have a break coming here, but when we get back from the break, I want to bring out one of my examples that I've kept from, oh, I've kept it, well, I keep examples for many years, but the one from 1998 about Warren Buffett and how he used the market uh, to his advantage, just like George Soros does and just like uh, uh, you know, anybody that, that thinks they have an advantage, whether it's Paul Tudor Jones or, uh, you know, uh, Carl Icahn, any of these guys, uh, you know, uh, I can't think of the oil guy. Uh, T. Boone Pickings. I mean, they they always they all have their own agendas, and you have to realize that. And they have to get rid of positions. They have to be able to do that. When I worked at Drexel, one of the things that they did there is they had meetings with stockbroker brokers every morning, and they had certain inventory that they had to move to the Drexel offices. And one of the biggest customers that they had at Drexel Burnham at that time was the actor and comedian Bob Hope, and he had millions and millions of dollars of stock. And whenever he had to uh, get rid of something, you know, the, the firm sold it for him. And so they had to package it up to tell the people that, you know, the customers that this was a good buy. And at that time, it, I'm sure it was, but they, they wanted to get the best price for the client as they possibly could. And so that's how they did it. And, uh, you know, this is, it still hasn't changed much. I mean, uh, you know, the banks are there to make money, folks. And if you think the bank is there to help you, you're in big trouble because uh, that's how they make uh, make their dough is off of our baking. Anyway, we're going to take a little break here, 877-927-6648. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. You take a hands-on approach to managing your investments, and whether you're bullish or bearish on Chinese stocks, the ETFs from Direction Shares are there to help you magnify your perspective. 
bull ETFs for a rising market and bear ETFs for a falling market. Direction Shares gives you the tools for both sides of the trade. Discover how we can help at DirectionShares.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors employing dynamic strategies. Investors in the fund should understand the consequences of seeking daily investment results, understand the risk of shorting, and intend to actively monitor and manage their investments. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. McEwen Mining is a high-growth, mid-tier producer in the Americas with a market capitalization of $1 billion. Experienced mining executive Rob McEwen, as chairman, CEO, and president, owns 25% of the outstanding shares of McEwen Mining and has put in place an ambitious business plan with the goal of qualifying for inclusion in the S&P 500 by 2015. With $70 million in cash and liquid assets as of the end of 2012 and completely debt-free, McEwen Mining is poised for growth. Production in 2013 is forecasted to grow at 24%, reaching 130,000 gold equivalent ounces. And over the next three years, McEwen Mining projects that their production will increase to 290,000 gold equivalent ounces, almost a three-fold increase from last year's totals. If you'd like to find out more about McEwen Mining, click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE or TSX under the symbol MUX. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts has officially launched at TFNN. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind software, the art of timing the trade charts allows you to scan for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, Butterflies, ABCs, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the market for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, and even months searching to find. As part of our introductory pricing, we're offering licenses available at only $59 per month. We're so confident that you'll love this new outstanding piece of charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Lock in your low price today by ordering your copy at TFNN.com. Larry, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Okay, folks, um, I posted a chart to uh, Tiger TV uh, that goes back to uh, 1998. It covers a 10-year monthly chart of silver uh, going back, uh, you know, quite some time. And uh, the main part, part about this is that when silver was going straight up, remember this was years ago when, you know, we didn't have any inflation or supposedly, and uh, it basically shows that when the market was uh, cresting at around 750 per ounce in silver, uh, Warren Buffett announced uh, a week, I think it was a week or three days before, that uh, he owned about 15% of all the above ground silver uh, that was available. That was put in the Berkshire Hathaway uh, report, uh, supposedly. And anyway, when the report came out in April, uh, a month later for uh, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, uh, Mr. Buffett had no silver at all, and silver had dropped 33 percent from the time he announced the, the amount the, money, the amount of silver that he was holding to where it was at that particular time. Now that's that's what makes me a technical trader, folks, because I don't have to listen to that stuff. I just try to look at the charts, rightly or wrongly. They're going to try to give me a little direction on whether I think the market's going to go up or down because the prices are going up. There's more buyers. If prices are going down, there's more sellers. You know, that's, uh, you know, the bottom line of, you know, what I'm trying to do. I had a question about Elliott Wave. Do I use any type of Elliott Wave analysis when I, when I do these patterns and things? And the answer to that is no, I don't. I use the Fibonacci summation sequence, which is part of what Elliott did. He looked at 618, and uh, he also looked at 1.618, and he looked at 382 and 50%.
that Elliot was not aware of the number 786, which is the square root of 618, or the number 1.27, which is the square root of 1.618. So that tells us that, you know, he had a partial picture of what was happening. The problem that I have with Elliott Wave is the counts that they come up with. You know, they count the waves, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, whatever it comes out to. But the problem is if you get three Elliott Wave people in the room, they're going to come up with nine different counts because each of them have, a, you know, a three, three alternative waves. And with patterns, you know, there's no alternative waves. That's what, what Basil was describing when he was looking at the triangle in gold. He said, you know, this is it, 1410, 1413. He said, this is it. That, that's one number. That's no count. That's a number that you have to look at. And on the downside, it's 1392. So, you know, that's uh, the bottom line of what trading is all about. It's not a rocket science building. It's a, it's a business. It's a business of making money. It's not about being right or wrong or who's the smartest or who has the highest IQ. It has nothing to do with that. So I think it's important that we realize that when trading, and this is not a rocket science, you know, business that we're dealing in. Now, um, I, I wanted to, uh, we were still talking about the, the S&P before the break because I believe we're going to hit, we're only uh, five points away from the target that I've been watching for a while, and that is that uh, 1608 level. We've got a half hour to go in the show and if the market keeps, uh, you know, drifting lower like it is, has been, we could uh, probably uh, make that before uh, the end of this show. But whether that happens or not, I still think we're going to hit it. Uh, the question is, how much of a rally are we going to get if we get one, you know, before that time? So the, the good part of that is, is that I don't know, but neither does anybody else know whether there's going to be a rally or not. No one can tell you with 100% certainty, what's going to happen next. That's not going to happen, and it never will. This is a probability-based business, and nothing more, nothing less. When you think you're dealing with certainty, you better watch your backside because something bad is going to happen. There are no certainties uh, in trading. There, you know, If you think you have one, you don't. You're just uh, you know, under the illusion uh, that you have one. Uh, we need to look at the Bradley model when we come back. Uh, we have got a short break coming here, and uh, when we we need to look at the Bradley model, which I'll post uh, during the break. And then also, I want to post the um, the Dow Jones long term chart that you know has made me so very very bearish, and uh, you know, and it's everywhere across all markets. Uh, you know, UK, everywhere. It's just really. Uh, really tough. And after we do that, uh, we come back from the bond, from the break, we're going to do treasury bonds, and we must do the dollar index, because the dollar index has certainly made that double top up at that 84.50 level that we talked about uh, more than a week ago. Uh, here again, that was a, it's one of those situations where the market was ready to break out to the upside, but it could not do it. And uh, this is what Basil also talked about is that you have to wait for that confirmation to make sure that it can thrust through there in order to see it work. We've got to take a break here. We come back, we're going to talk about the Bradley model, some stocks, and then also some bonds. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, gives you Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. With Market Insights, nothing is left to guessing. With the market at record levels, volatility is here, and now is a perfect time to take advantage of a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights. As recently as March 26th, Tom advised his subscribers to liquidate their four short short-term equity holdings, closing out all four positions for a combined 15.9% profit, and on April 1st, Tom advised his clients to sell their longer-term position in AIG warrants, locking in more than a 40% profit in just that one trade. If you'd like to see the kind of newsletter Tom O'Brien sends out to his subscribers each morning, then sign up for your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? 
Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's n a d e x.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of tfnn.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 9 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.mobile in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're taking a look at the Bradley stock market model in the Tiger TV right now. We've talked about this many times over the past uh, years, and uh, right now it's, it's lining up relatively perfectly. I think the thing to keep in mind here that if we get the Dow uh, much below uh, 14,900, it's going to mean that everybody that bought during the month of May is going to have a loss, and that would be equal to a um, you know a, at least a weekly, if not a monthly, reversal uh, in prices, which is usually in itself you know quite bearish. So we have to you know wait to see if that's going to occur. But the main thing that I think and which I think is the most important uh, thing that we have uh, to look at here is the fact that the uh, long-term Dow Jones Industrial, uh, going back to uh, going back 14 years uh, to the high that we made in the big bull market of 1999, uh, people don't realize that, but from 1999 to 2002, the NASDAQ gave up well over 80% of its value. It went from almost uh, 5,000 to uh, just above uh, 1,500, as I recall. And, uh, of course, it, it's had a pretty good rally since that time. But this pattern that we're looking at in Tiger TV right now is by far the most accurate of any of the patterns that uh, Gartley ever talked about. It's known as the expanding uh, triangle. It's also known as a three-drive to a top pattern and it's also known as a uh, reverse point wave. They all come together in one pattern, and it puts the uh, probability of this winning in the area uh, in the 85% category. As a matter of fact, it's very difficult 
to find these patterns fail, even if you're looking at them on a short-term basis of 5 minutes, 15 hourly. They, they have some type of a, a big reaction, even if uh, it's not something significant. And in our price level on this, I'm almost afraid to say what it could be, but uh, you know, it, it's going to be very, very violent here. And the reason why I believe that is because what's happened you know, with the VIX index. We've been talking about that index for a, you know, a very long time, and it has uh, done pretty much what, uh, you know, we thought it was going to do, uh, you know, by the fact that it was making, you know, the uh, uh, higher bottoms all along. And uh, the comparison that it had with the uh, Nikkei Dow move, and we, we went above, I believe, uh, almost hit 1,800. I think we hit 1,750 or something uh, in the... Um, the, uh, the uh, VIX index today, we've had three lower tops now, so we, we're forming a triangle in the VIX, but I think it's just a matter of time, you know, till we break out of that uh, 1900 level and head somewhere towards 26. So that's the, uh, you know, thing that we were looking at is, uh, you know, something that I think would be quite interesting. But the thing to look at, if you get a chance to look at Tiger TV today, is the comparison between the VIX index pattern with that 135 higher bottoms versus the Nikkei pattern where we had the 135 uh, higher patterns all along. And, of course, that high that we made uh, in the Nikkei was an exact 786 on the weekly charts going back five years. So that was a major spot, and the Nikkei was down another 3.5% uh, last night uh, in Japan. So it's telling us that it's had a major back off, and that's why – the uh, dollar is, uh, you know, uh, gaining to the end because of the fact that the uh, the, the difference in these is, is getting very, very close. We're, we just made a new low uh, in the S&P um, 500 futures, so we're only about four points away uh, from that number that we're looking at around, well, three points away, 1607. And uh, that should give uh, some relief because there's uh, several AB equals CD patterns that end at that spot. Now, if that's you know, it's a probability. It's certainly, uh, you know, not a certainty uh, by any stretch of the imagination because now we have a, for the first time in a long time, we have a grossly oversold stock market on a short-term basis, not on a long-term basis. Uh, that that, ha that won't happen for a long time. But on a short-term basis, uh, we're down, uh, you know, several days from the high, and that means that we probably should get a pretty good snapback rally and, you know, where and when and if it comes, it'll probably go more to the upside than I probably expect. But, you know, I am expecting a bounce somewhere around this uh, 1607, 1608 ballpark. You know, we've been to 1610, so we'll see if uh, we get there. You know, we only got 20 minutes to go in the show, so we'll, we'll see if it actually does it. But the VIX has been telling us all along that this market is really uh, ready to go a whole lot higher uh, in the VIX, meaning a whole lot lower in the stock market. That's uh, uh, something that I think is, is written in stone, at least from, the, from a technical standpoint. So that's what we, we are watching very, very closely. And I'm going to uh, bring up a, a chart of the Treasury bonds because they have been, uh, uh, you know, holding up relatively well uh, off of that last – oh, dear – I have a small problem here, and that is that um, the they've switched over from the June to September, and I haven't made any. Uh, oh dear, let me see. Let me see if I can do this without breaking uh, a code of any kind, and then we can get this done. It would be quite easy. Ah, that helps a little bit, but not much. Yes. Uh, okay. Just give me a second, and I'll have this in here, and uh, we will be watching this. Uh, pretty good. Okay, let me make sure I update it to make sure that we have. Uh, the problem is, you see, we switched from the September, or from the June to the September, and that makes a, a difference in uh, you know what's actually happened because we've come down in the uh, gold market. Wow, in the bond market, down to the um, seven eight six retracement of the low of last March, and that completed a big A B C D pattern. And if that's correct, we should get a rally of about eight. Uh, bond point. So that would take us from 139 up to the 147 level. And uh, that's where we would be looking to, you know, put a short on because this is a market that's had lower tops since last June. Uh, you know, we've said for quite a while that we're looking at higher interest rates along the, uh, 
uh, along the you know the path of uh, at least resistance in interest rates. Uh, mortgage rates have already moved a little bit higher. You're not going to see any relief in the uh, credit card uh, business part of interest rates because the bank makes too much money off of that. But we've got lower tops going along uh, in the bonds and also lower bottoms. So that 31-year, 32-year cycle high that uh, I've been talking about for about a year now, uh, actually, actually it's been a year, has actually uh, come to pass, and we haven't started to accelerate to the downside because I really think the thing that, that there's a caveat out there or the uh, a black swan, so to speak, is the fact that we could get a really spike in interest rates here, and that would cause the market to really go, uh, you know, bonkers in, uh, you know, the wrong direction. And I don't, do not think that the stock market is priced in uh, higher interest, that interest rates. That's just, uh, you know, my personal, uh, my personal opinion, whether it means anything or not, you know, I'm not actually sure, but all I know is that that's what it looks like to me is the fact that we have, uh, we put these things into a, a, a container that thinks that they can't possibly, you know, be wrong, that there's no, there's no margin of error, you know, to, uh, to have happen here. And uh, the, the other one that I wanted to mention, and that, that's the, really it's the short-term rates that, you know, are the main one, which are the Treasury notes. And I, I wanted to focus on the uh, long-term weekly chart of Treasury notes uh, showing the uh, uh, head and shoulders pattern that is there because it's a uh, very, uh, it's so perfectly symmetrical that it's, it's really hard to uh, uh, dis, 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 discharge. I mean, um, it's just amazing. We're at major support in the bonds because this is, excuse me, the Treasury notes. If the Treasury notes break below 128, the, the cat's out of the bag. I mean, that's going to be uh, there's going to be a real spike in rates if notes ever get uh, to about two and a half percent on the 10 years, uh, because 10 years is what determines what the mortgage rates are and credit card rates and things like that. So, it's important that these notes, uh, if they are bottoming here, have a pretty good rally because if we can get a nice rally in the notes and bonds over the next few weeks. Uh, that would be a uh, really good place uh, to, I think, to, you know, try to get short on. You know, I really wanted to be short at 150 in the Treasury bonds, and they only got to 149.24. Uh, and uh, I, I, the, the train left the station without me. The conductor didn't even blow his whistle, and I was able to get a little bit of it, but a very, very small amount compared to what I would like to have had. Uh, fortunately, the stocks have been, you know, performing a little better these last few weeks. And, uh, you know, gold has been doing well. So, uh, you know, we've got some things that are still, you know, working really well as far as the pattern. And, of course, the currencies, you know, the currencies have been doing really well. And since we're on the currencies, I think uh, it's, it's uh, important that we take a look now at the, uh, the U.S. dollar because, uh, you know, we've talked about this double top that uh, we've had for, oh, my gosh, it's been going on now for well over several weeks. And if we take a look at it, you can see that uh, the double top that occurred uh, back at that 84.50 uh, level, it was almost a perfect double top from the one last July. So it was about a year uh, in duration, and that means that uh, you know we're we're heading down a lot lower. The dollar index has already broken below the the 786 of that uh, level, and we're heading. Uh, looks like the euro is going to be looking uh, towards that 132. Uh, 50 level, and uh, of course the pound could get all the way back to 156 uh, without any trouble at all. But the key uh, to my uh, it, for the dollar for the dollar index, I know the euro is 53 percent of the dollar index, so that skews uh, you know that skews the uh, euro the dollar index by quite a bit. But the one that that has my my strongest interest uh, is the uh, Japanese yen versus uh, the Nikkei because there's a correlation there. Of 95 percent. In other words, when the yen goes in one direction, the the Japanese stock market goes in that direction, and that's what's been happening. And since we hit 103, we've now broken below par, which we we thought was going to happen, and now we're trading at 99. And so the next uh, the next level to look look at is 96, and that is saying that the Japanese stock market looks like it still wants to go a lot lower. And it can drop another two or three thousand points and still just barely make the three eight two retracement because it had such a such a huge move to the upside. They got everybody looking one way in that market, 
and then they shut the door and wouldn't let anybody out, and now the people that are still in the corral are, uh, you know, wondering, you know, what's the next stop uh, to look at. So the dollar index uh, should have some support at around 80. That would be the uh, 61% uh, retracement of the move from September uh, to June of this year. Uh, we actually we actually topped in late May, around the 25th, right near the uh, solar eclipse, uh, excuse me, lunar eclipse and uh, full moon. So that's uh, the one that we're uh, that we're looking at uh, at the present time. I'm not. Um, um, longer term in the dollar, you know, people have always asked me, you know, well, if the dollar is going to be, you know, really weak, isn't gold going to, you know, head to the moon? Well, you know, you got to look at each one of these separately, folks, because if these are asset classes that people, these investors put their money in, and if they all move in one direction really quickly, the market can move very, very fast. And we're, we're seeing increased volatility across most asset classes. And uh, with a bias, more or less, of deflation, not inflation. So I think this is something that the, the Federal Reserve has tried to, uh, you know, keep us from having happening as a deflation. But if they fail at this, this means that interest rates could go a lot higher, and uh, we could see, you know, lower gold prices. You you don't really uh, don't really know that because people try to make the the uh, the case for you know higher interest rates and uh, lower gold prices, but that's not what happened in 1980. The reason why gold was so high is because we had 13% interest rates in T-bills and and, uh, 15% rates in a 30-year bond, and and we had uh, uh, tax-free munis yielding 16%. I was at Drexel during those years, and I remember buying tax-free munis at 16%, which was equivalent to a 32% yield based on the tax brackets you were in. And it was uh, it was really, it was like Christmas Day. Unfortunately, those bonds were called away in two years as interest rates, uh, you know, collapsed once Paul Volcker came in. And uh, that was the thing that made it work. That was the uh, one of the things that I think that is, uh, you know, one of the important things that uh, happened during the, the Reagan administration. Uh, actually, Carter brought in... Uh, uh, Paul Volcker, and that was probably the best thing that Jimmy Carter did. So we're getting, uh, we're almost down to our spot now in the S and P. We're about a point or so away. We're at sixteen oh eight and a half. We'll have to watch it closely at this spot because, um, as I posted into Tiger TV, we are looking at uh, there's uh, three A B C D patterns coming in together at that spot. Now remember that spot has a pretty wide band. It goes from sixteen oh eight down to about uh, sixteen even. So. But if we go below 1600 today in the uh, in the S and P uh, using the June futures, uh, we're going to switch over. I believe on um, next Thursday on the 13th, I think is when we switch over to the uh, Thursday. The 13th, we'll switch over to September uh, futures, which are trading about six points below uh, the June right now. And that's only because it's a contract and how they figure the carrying charges but um, if we get below 15.99 in the uh, e-mini S&P today we could look at something uh, very bad oh boy oh boy Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Okay, folks, as we come into the corral for the last time, uh, we uh, posted the uh, chart for the dollar versus the yen on a 60-minute um, basis. It shows the ABCD pattern that happened um, yesterday and that leads to you know much lower prices in the end which means maybe uh, lower prices in the uh, Nikkei because it's down another three and a half percent last night and you know breaking some pretty significant support so that's what we're that's what we're looking at as we approach these uh, these levels right here uh, we're very close to this number we were looking at in the uh, e mini s and p in the June futures around the 1607 the 1605 somewhere in that ballpark uh, that's what it looks like one other thing I'd like to mention folks I've, I've heard some feedbacks from some of the folks that uh, I know and the new software from uh, Tiger TV, uh, the art of charting that shows the Gartleys and the butterflies and scans them for you well over 5,000 stocks and ETFs is just bonkers. It's really, really good. Uh, it does a great job. You've got to do your own risk-reward uh, work and stuff like that and you know place the trade yourself. But as far as scanning for the patterns, uh, David and Tom have done uh, a fa fabulous job of putting something out that is uh, – very, very valuable. Why they brought it out at such a cheap price, I, I think it's an introductory price, and you ought to test and kick the tires of it because it certainly is a, a welcome addition to technical analysis. It, it spots these patterns, uh, you know, very, very nicely. So uh, if you trade stocks and ETFs, I would think it would be a must because it, it's only uh, I think around $60 a month or something, and considering the amount of time that it takes to scan this stuff,
and do it technically and also scientifically is it's uh, something that's really uh, quite worthwhile. So that's what we're looking at. We're getting ready. To, oh, we've got another couple of minutes here. And uh, someone uh, asked, uh, asked the question about the, um, does the uh, charting package that uh, TFNN covered ETFs, uh, yes, it, it certainly does. And it really does a really good, uh, really good job. And it covers, I, I think the time frame that it looks at is uh, uh, daily. And I imagine, you know, down the road they're going to have one that will also work with Forex and futures. But it says uh, it does very good. It's just, uh, you know, it's just really, really quite good. Uh, so if you get a chance, really take a look at it. There's one statistic that I should uh, bring, bring out to you um, that is very, very important. There's only been there's only been um, uh, 22 times in the history of the Dow Jones Industrial Average where the market was up during January and February. Okay, in 22 times the market was up in January and February. 22 times that's happened in the history of the Dow where the market did not close higher. And we were up January and February big time this year. So at the end of the year, the Dow should close higher than what it did based on statistics because it's never gone up during January and February and closed below that point in the whole history of the Dow. So keep that in mind. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless. Let me tell you something, folks. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success. And it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability. Because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today. Because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.